I grew up as a child in the 90s, and my days after school are filled with Nicktoons. Flash forward 20, 15 years or so, and I am browsing the movie section at the local Walmart. When I am hit with a wall of nostalgia, sitting on the shelf with is a complete series of Hey Arnold. I have a shitty job, however, and I, they want $20, which in my mind just translates to two hours of work. I decided to be incredibly cheap and just instead go home to YouTube to some episodes to satisfy my urge to remember when times were simple. It was a mistake. I won't soon forget. I got home, popped some popcorn, powered my, up my laptop, and began to search. When a simple click, every episode lay me before me. I satisfied, satisfied, I began to watch episode by episode. When it was well into dark, and I was about to close the laptop when I noticed a video on the suggested video list that simply read, Hey Arnold, Lee. I'm sure that. Lee must have stood for the lost episode or something. I clicked on the video to excited to see a lost episode I've never heard of before. When the page opened, it said in the box that the video was had been removed. Half asked, "Sorry, not sorry." Referring bot red box staring at me. Further curious at the, this point, I scrolled down to the further comment section for clues. There wasn't any. There weren't that many views, surprisingly. There was, were only a few comments. The first two or less expressed horror and confusion as what they have just watched. The third comment caught my eye. It was the original poster of the video, and he had explained the video had been removed, but it could have been still watching the site and provided a link. I always had a fear of those believing it be a virus, but pounding curiosity getting better of me, I decided to click anyway. This had led me to a site of which I can't remember the name, but it seemed typical. The basic layout with tabs and ads. The mi in the middle, however, was a small box to click on it with a play arrow. And the video went full screen, began to play. I began to erase my paranoia and sit back as I was about to watch a chapter of a cartoon memories added to my collection. I had no idea what has followed, but there's nothing short of terrifying and would rock me to the very core. The video started out with simple texts where you are about to watch what the creators of the hit show Hey Arnold intended to be the original series finale. I angered and frightened Nickelodeon ex 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 executives <laughs> and the episode was never aired as such. You, you cannot handle disturbing imagery then you are suggested to leave. You have been warned. I was concerned by this, but pushed it from my mind as the upbeat jazz tempo rang out, and the theme song began. It was introduced as The Furnace. The show itself started with Arnold's teacher with a class outside teaching them about chemical reactions and using them to launch a rocket. Harold expresses what he wants to launch the rocket, but... The teacher declines, saying that there is no time, and leaves to put the supplies as the bell rings. It cuts to Harold, Sid, and Stinky opening up the supply cabinet, stealing some rockets and the chemicals, and walking out, vowing to make a big blast off. It's at this point I begin to realize something. This episode looks familiar. I get on my phone, do a little research, and do find that this is an episode that aired with the final season of the show. I am beyond piss, but decided to watch anyways because I figure out my computer is already infested with whatever virus that page carried out anyhow. I click play again. The boys have stolen the supplies and went behind an abandoned police station to blow up a rocket, which coincidentally Ernie, one of Arnold's tenants, who was a dem demolition man, was set to destroy by explosives. The boys launch the rocket and somehow goes in the building, which the boys do not know is abandoned, and blows it up due to the demolition. The boys stupidly believe it was their rocket that did the damage, but they have killed several police officers, and now they are wanted fugitives. This is where big things get really strange. The video paused shortly. 
I moved my arrow to reveal that indeed the video was still playing. Soon, it began again. Only now the quality had changed. It seemed like a cutover. Stinky now on the ground, crying, explain, exclaiming that they should go to the police. Harold berates friends, claiming that they will be sentenced to death penalty. We just killed the police, you idiot! He screamed, clearly angry. I should, at this point, I am, I am becoming confused and easy, uneasy. I am a die-hard, I am a die-hard fan of the series, and I can't recall any of this. Scene continues as Stinky begins to walk off, sobbing and claiming that he plans to find the nearest police officer to tell him what happened. It was, as w it was only a mistake. Harold became enraged, as he often does in the show, but this time he charges Stinky and tackles him from behind. Stinky begins to f put up a fight, but there is no match for the much larger boy, especially since he's the face first on the sidewalk. Sid, Harold yells, help! Sid runs in the front action, clearly confused and scared, and asks what that he wants to him to do that rock grab it and Sid looks down with struggle continues and sees a large rock laying by a dumpster he hesitates do it Harold commands or I'll pound you clearly terrified at this point Sid picks up the rock and you can see Sid's eyes glow the large and reset resistance sets in as Harold says okay Sid I'll hold him. I'll bash you. I'll bash his skull with this rock. Sid can't move. His stinky lay there with a scrap rub from the struggle, desperately begging for his life while sobbing con uncontrollably. Earl begins to plead to Sid and tells him if Stinky got away, then he would never see their parents again. You mix the chemicals. You're as you're just as responsible as I am. Harold screams, "Kill him!" Sid drops to his knees, brings the rock above his head, and begins to bash Stinky's brains, and he closes his eyes, tears flowing down over them, and screams, I'm sorry! Over and over, all while continuously smashing Stinky's head with a rock. He brings the rock down one last time, sits back, chin tucked down as pure, pure guilt as Harold breathes heavily. Finally able to rest at the top of the lifeless body below him, they sit there for a moment in silence. Sid simply whispers, I'm sorry. They hear police sirens in the background, and not knowing it's un unrelated to them, Harold begins to panic. Sid, still crying, begins to ask frantically what they should do. Harold says that they need to get out of there. They throw Stinky's body in the dumpster and hightail it out of there. Stinky's blood was still freshly pooled in the alleyway sidewalk. They run until Sid sees what believes to be their salvation, Arnold's house. They climb through a window that drops into the basement. They scramble around and hide when they hear, hear the door um, at the top of the stairs open. Harold hides behind some boxes and Sid hides beside the stairs. Sid sits with his knees up to his chest and his head between them, as if they were broken. Arnold comes through the next door, comes through the door, exclaiming to be his grandpa that he is going to do some laundry and begins descending the stairs unaware that he's not alone. He reaches the end of the stairs and hears something behind him. He turns to find Sid sitting there crying with his head between his knees. Arnold appears confused and a little on edge. Sid. Arnold asks, Is that you? You killed him, Arnold, Sid softly. Sid says softly in a whimper, He killed Stinky and left his body in the garbage. No God will forgive us now. Clearly in shock and scared out of his mind, on it, Arnold is unable to call for help. Then he hears it, footsteps approaching behind him, and then rage-induced breathing so close that he can feel it. As the footsteps seize, turns slowly and stares into the eyes of Harold and beams down on him with irritation and anger. Changes to, 
scene where Arnold begins to tie, is being tied to a chair with duct tape around his mouth, as you could hear the upstairs opening, door opening. You could see the fear in his eyes as muffled screams desperately try to escape the tape. Grandpa comes down the steps, and probably due to some sentimentality, as, as often played on the show, believes Arnold is just playing a game. He talks about the game and laughs as he exits out the door, laughing about the imagination of youth as Arnold struggles against his restraints and mutter, mutely screams for his life to his deaf ears. He has no idea as it will be the last time he will see his grandson alive, just playing a game. Out of the backyard, you can see the boys exit from the under the staircase, cuts to the point of view from Arnold as he stares, stares into the dimly lit basement. Sid and Harold enter the shot from each side and stare down at Arnold. Sid looks scared as he yet shakily asks Arnold what they will do. Harold looks at Arnold with the same angry look on his face and says, I'm sorry, Arnold, but no one's sending me to jail. The screen goes black and opens the down shot of the basement as Harold closes the door to the furnace. The chair sits empty now, as with the rope cu cut up and lying on the floor. Some blood is on the chair and the floor around it. Sid kneels on the ground and, and absolutely crying. What should we do? How could we do this? They're our friends. Harold appears to feel a little guilt as he explains to Sid that they had to do it or else they would be locked up. The next little bit of the show is a mashup of S Sid crying. Harold pacing around, wondering what to do, and Sid looking at the knife at Grandpa sitting on the workbench, with almost a look on the acceptance on his face. It is then you, you that hear a slicing sound, and worried, Harold rushes over and looks beside the staircase. There, leaned against the wall, Sid with his throat slit in a gruesome suicide. Harold looks at the scene in final shock at first, and then spiteful dermatation as he claims to be his dead friend. Fine, I'll do it alone then. He then hears a loud conversation coming from upstairs, just beyond the door, and worried it may be somebody inquiring about Arnold. He sneaks up the stairs to listen, but no mention is Arnold of is made. He instead hears Ernie bragging to the rest of the tenants on how he'd blown up an old abandoned police station that day. It took a minute for Harold's dull mind to register it. Then the tears began. His head flooded with guilt as he realized he murdered two of his friends that day and lost another, simply due to a misunderstanding. He walked down the steps and sat on the last one. He hung his... He ate his head in pure shame. Scene cuts to the poster saying, you see, Have you seen them? Drawing with three pictures of Harold, stinky and sit on it. Harold's mom was crying as she hugs her husband around him. I, we don't want to go missing like this. We just want to know what happened to our son and his friends, she said. Next scene opens to over a shoulder view as Grandpa opens the door basement. Shouts... He shouts to Arnold that dinner is ready and then there's no response as he noticed the chair... The bottom of the stairs was empty. He descends to the stairs and gets. And when he gets closer, he noticed the rope and blood surrounding the chair. He finishes descent, fixated on the chair, and stands next to it, staring at confusion and worry. As he puts up the chair, he noticed something on the floor behind those boxes. He saw Sid, dead with blood all over, with a bloody knife behind beside him. Grandpa was shocked. He, he picks up the knife and puts it onto the table, looks down at Sid, feeling depressed. He double glances around the room, looking for Arnold, but his eyes fixated. Something a few feet behind, in front of the door, it's Harold. Hung from the ceiling, swinging back and forth ever so lightly. Slightly. Grandpa moves towards Harold in shock, unable to express any emotions. As he nears him puts his hand up to touch arm Harold almost as if to ensure him what he is seeing is real before he touches Harold. 
He noticed something behind the boy and right. A folded up piece of paper taped to the furnace. He approached it and the furnace slowly, afraid to find more horrors and retrieves in the notes. Simply reads, aren't you glad it was just a game? The camera cuts inside the furnace, facing out, and it's pitch black as the door clo is closed. You can see Grandpa through three rectangular holes that act as a vent. The furnace latch unlocks loudly. The door creaks open slowly. Grandpa's jaw closes and begins to quiver as he stares at what lays inside. The only hint is given is a hand with a sleeve, the same color of Arnold's shirt pulled up. The hand you s and sleeve, slightly soaked with blood. You look in Grandpa's eyes as he presumably looks upon his only grandson, the only remnants of his dead, long deceased son as he mutilated in the furnace. When the scene faded to the funeral and held for Arnold, Stinky, Sid, and Harold, Helga and Gerald was crying to their friend's death as they hugged each other. Grandpa drops a tear in his eye and parents hold their son's death. The video cuts to black. I close the window, slam my laptop shut, and a small part of my demishing, demishing childhood died. Everything was normal after that. I never researched the video or tried to find it again. I just really didn't care as I figured out it was a lousy, lousy knockoff made by some overweight nobody in his mother's basement. After a couple weeks, however, I decided the, the series determined to not let my childhood be destroyed by one incident. Began, I began to watch episode after episode after until I came upon the one in the last season. It was the titled On the Lamb. It was the episode the knockoff was based on, or vice versa, perhaps. But I didn't remember much from the episode. But as I played to, began to feel disturbed. The similarities between the two were gut-wrenching. I mean, the episodes were the same until the police stations were blown up. But even after that, we still hear parallels. First, after the explosion, Stinky was the only one who suggested going to the authorities. Next, Arnold was being tied up in his basement completely furnished with workbench and a furnace to mind you by the three boys. At this moment, he only expression, irritants, and slight anger. He then, slightly later in the show, it happens. The scene, the same darn, the same darn scene. Grandpa enters the basement and talks about the game Arnold is playing, but it's obvious who's not crazy and that Arnold is not playing a game. It looks the Look of the interns of earlier is gone. The expression on his face is now nothing but short of fear, heart pounding, fucking terror. He shrieks the way an, only a nine year old is knowing death is about is, is upon him can. But once again, it is smothered by duct tape as the grandpa closes the door, darkening the basement once again. No one is no one except no one dies in this version. It was on this it was as if the scene had been left there, cut short and repur repurposed for the children's version. And it made me wonder if the video could be true. Maybe the show creator, infuriated by the cancellation of the show, potentially had a darker ending planned for the blonde-headed boy with a football-shaped head. Later, Arnold came crashing through the basement door and begins explaining everything to his grandpa that he was playing a game. But in the back of my mind, I think that's not Arnold. Arnold is still in the basement, dead in the furnace. 